It's that time of the week. It's time for you to get an easy key. Court of Stars, baby. The first thing that you can do. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, maybe it is one of the easier dungeons to do. But you will still need to learn some mechanics, some routes, some things that will make the run smoother, easier, better loop for you, better loop for your party and your friends, or maybe the pugs that you dare go into so in today's video we will go over everything that you need to know for court of stars and listen if you like these guys these videos these are a hundred percent sponsored by our patreons which are making this possible because uh, they do take a little bit of work and uh listen it's not necessarily required but if you do want to support these types of videos plus everything else that goes on on marcelin online consider checking the patreon page down below we definitely, definitely appreciate it. It definitely helps us make even more of these guides in the future. Thank you very much. Court of stars, baby. The route here has several options, but we found that the straightforward one worked best for us. We also can give a perfect percentage route here, as it depends very much on the buffs present in the dungeon and if they will allow you to skip some enforcers or not. So the route we made assumes you will have no enforcer skip buffs. If you can use such items, you can simply take the percentage elsewhere. Throughout the dungeon, you will find various interactable objects which will help you clear the dungeon faster by either giving you various buffs, help you pull the mini bosses faster, damage reduction, and so on, and they can be activated by specific races, classes, or professions. Also, these buffs are not all available at the same time, so you'll have a couple of random ones active at any time, so you will need to look out for them, with the exception of the poison vial next to the first boss, which is always active. There are maps and weak auras to help you figure out which buffs do what. Sunshade uses a weak aura which announces in chat what the buff does and who can activate it, and you can find the weak aura linked in the description below. As you get off the boat in the moonlit landing, you will notice one Dusk Watch guard protecting the entrance to the rest of the dungeon. You can either sap him and skip or invis if you wish, or if you don't have the classes or potions for this, you can grab him with you up the stairs to the next zone. His abilities are Quelling Strike, a frontal attack dealing damage and stunning players, and Fortification, a buff they cast on themselves to reduce damage taken and increase their haste. Luckily, you can purge this, and if you have a mage, it's best to let them enjoy the haste. Upstairs, you'll find a couple of packs with various mobs and an arcane beacon which you need to deactivate. Mana worms cast wild detonation when they die, leaving deadly swirls on the floor, so move out of these. The mana sabers leap with mana fang, dealing damage and leaving a dot on all players hit by the pounce which healers should dispel, and the sentry will try to run to the beacon and call for help with sound alarm. Use displacement CCs and slows as much as possible and kill the sentry fast before it reaches the beacon and calls for dusk watch reinforcements, who will cast subdue, stunning the target for 8 seconds. If a beacon is activated by a sentry, you will no longer be able to deactivate it and other sentries will also be able to use it. The Guardian Constructs you also encounter in the area have three notable abilities. Suppress, dealing arcane damage and preventing the player from attacking, so make sure to interrupt this. Charged Smash, dealing large physical damage to all players close to his target and leaving a zone of magic which also deals heavy damage, so dodge it. Or get out of it fast if you got hit. Charging Station is another cast they do which heals all the targets around the construct and increases their damage done. If the construct is alone, you can ignore this attack, but if you pull it with other mobs, you should stop this attack as well. Continue towards the first boss, CCing the sentries and killing more of the same packs and deactivating beacons. Here inside the room on the left, you can also find the first buff, if it's up that is. The Goblin Slash Engineering Orb, which if activated, will occasionally short circuit the constructs, reducing their damage done and occasionally stunning them. Some groups prefer to clear some packs at the docks as well, especially if they have a stealth class in their group who can skip the construct after the first boss and open the doors to the second boss area earlier. We prefer not to do this however, as it only saves a small amount of time if the stealther is really quick 
and there are no buffs which help you pull mini bosses without killing enforcers. The packs you encounter at the docks also have a Dusk Watch Arcanist who casts a Nightfall Orb, bouncing arcane damage through your party. Seal Magic is their other attack, inflicting AoE damage and silencing players. Bound energies can also be found at the docks and they cast Charge Blast, inflicting arcane damage in a front line and knocking you back. You'll also encounter some of these mobs in the first boss room if you happen to pull some trash there and arcane manifestations. They'll cast Drain Magic, inflicting AoE arcane damage to players and increasing their own damage dealt. Crossing the bridge to the first boss, you'll find a room full of mobs, which we will ignore for our route. Here you'll also find the vial in the center of the room, so send an alchemist or a rogue to poison it. Around the room there are also three beacons which you should deactivate unless you want to deal with his reinforcements during the fight. Vigilant Duskwatch, who will cast Hinder, stunning their target. Split your group and have them each go to a pillar. You'll need to be careful and wait for the patrols to move away before you get close enough to deactivate these. Mind Soothe is also a pretty useful spell to have here. Once all three pillars are inactive, you can pull the boss and make sure you do it when he is alone. The boss himself has three important abilities. Resonant Slash is an AoE cone attack which deals damage and stuns in front and behind him and you should obviously dodge it. Your tank should also try to keep the boss facing the same direction as much as possible and that direction should not be towards your ranged players. It's best to tank him close to the file while the range chill near the bridge. This way, if the boss accidentally turns towards them, they can outrange the cone. Street Sweeper summons an orb which places an arcane line on the floor, dealing large amounts of damage. You should also dodge this, clearly. Arcane Lockdown is his most important ability, perhaps, especially in combinations with Street Sweeper. This places three stacks of a debuff on all players and each stack will slow you by 30% and deal ticking damage. You can either jump three times to remove all three stacks, or if you are lucky to have a priest in your group, they can time their mass dispels just right and then your party has nothing to worry about. The debuff is magic and can be dispelled or reflected with diffuse magic for example, but you can also ditch it with any movement clearing ability like shapeshift, disengage, tiger's lust, etc. Signal Beacon is an ability he casts at 75% health, but nothing will happen if you clicked all the beacons prior. At 25%, he will run to the center of the room and drink from the Flask of the Solemn Knight, his file, which, if poisoned, will kill him very fast. But if you haven't managed to poison it, it will give him a 30% damage and haste buff. So get an alchemist with you, it's easy, they're everywhere these days. After the first boss, you can go up the stairs and pull the construct with you to have something to cleave along the way, but be careful with his frontals. As you come out of the other side, you will find a watchful inquisitor and a pack of blazing imps. And let me tell you, you really want to keep those imps CC'd. They all cast at the same time and generally prefer the same target, so if their fireballs go through, they'll probably one-shot one of your friends. Their second attack is Drifting Embers, shooting fire at random players. The Imps don't have too much health however, so you should have no trouble with them if you rotate your CCs. The Inquisitor casts Eye Storm, an attack you can stop by using Displacement CC, so this guy's not too bad. He also casts Searing Glare, dealing moderate damage, this is interruptible with classic interrupt spells. The next demon pack is a Shadow Mistress, Shaksha. <laughs> and her faithful demon puppy, a legion hound. The puppy will leap around trying to kill your target with fell blaze leap, dropping a fell blaze puddle under their feet, so move out. They also cast ferocity, so soothe them, increasing their haste by 100%. Meanwhile, the mistress will try to bewitch you, reducing your movement speed and haste. She also casts shadow slash, dealing shadow damage and reducing healing received, so pop a defensive. Now this is the area where you pick and choose what packs you want to pull and where, depending on where the enforcers spawn and what buffs you have available. You don't have to click the buffs, but since you have to kill things anyway, why not? There will only be one Fellbound enforcer at any time and you will see her location on your minimap, so you'll most likely clear trash on your way to her. 
You can even skip the patrol next to the boss if you go around the back of the area. Now, when you pull enforcers, make sure they are always tanked next to a pillar or a doorway so that your party has an easy time line of sighting their fell detonation. A decent enough hit with a pretty big 12 second dot afterwards. So if all the players get hit, your healer will not be amused. As soon as an enforcer dies, they cry out to the boss that you have infiltrated their court and the boss sends one of her mini bosses to inspect. So every time you kill an enforcer, a mini boss will follow. Be very careful where you're positioned as an enforcer could very well spawn on top of you and wipe your group in combination with the mini boss attacks. Also, if you die while fighting a mini boss, it will count as if you are in boss combat and you won't be able to release and rejoin the fight. Also, be very careful to not tank the mini bosses too close to the boss area, as they all have an aura they use to buff their mini boss and boss friends, increasing their health and damage done by 100%, and these stack. So, if you pull the boss with all three mini bosses, you will not gain any time, as they will have loads of extra health. All their attacks will probably one shot you and your party, and you won't be able to deal with all the mechanics together you think Sargeras would be a much bigger boss. The range of their buffs is pretty big, 70 yards, and you will wonder why did it one-shot me? Let's see the abilities of each mini-boss. Imaku Tia? Um, I, I, I'm a Katya? Sounds like my high school. The lady has a lot of hands and a lot of blades. Her first ability is Whirling Blades. How shocking. She whirls around in a circle and deals damage to anyone inside it, leaving a bleed as well. Her second attack is Scream of Pain. This deals damage and silences for 5 seconds, so take care and stop your cast. Balgar, the Watchful, has plenty of eyes to watch you with and casts Disintegration Beam. A cast which deals loads of damage if left uninterrupted, reduces the player's damage done and their movement speed. Impending Doom places dots on two targets which deal ticking damage and explode for AoE damage when they expire or get dispelled, so pop a defensive and move out of the group with this. Jazz Haru is one I personally dislike the most. He does a crushing leap, jumping to a target and dealing damage and knocking back players when landing, so dodge the swirly. Immediately after the leap, he'll cast a shockwave, pointed at whatever the tank is, but be very careful as he sometimes turns at the last moment and hits you where you should technically be safe and the shockwave is wider than you think, so exaggerate the movement a bit. Once all three mini bosses are down, you can go pull the Imp Lady. If you clear the patrol in front of her, you can pull her where she stands and use the entire area here for the fight. If the patrol is still active, however, pull her inside here. Lady Flame Wreath has three important abilities. Burning Intensity, dealing pulsating AoE damage and increasing her fire damage done. Withering Soul, a debuff on your party, reducing health and speed, which you should rotate interrupts on. And Infernal Eruption, spawning fiery swirlies under your feet, which will soon explode, dealing damage, knocking up players who stand in them and spawn imps. But we already know how to deal with these. Kill them quickly and don't let them cast. It's also best if your entire party stacks on your tank so that you can spawn all of the imps in the same location and zerg them down fast. There will be fire where the swirly spawned and the fire will hurt. So make sure to move away from it and not dash through it while trying to kill the imps. You will end up getting dead instead. After defeating the second boss, Lilith will spawn and give you a masquerade disguise when you talk to her so you can pass unobserved through the nobles to the last boss. However, to get to the last boss you will need the key, and who has the key? Another mini boss disguised as a suspicious noble, chatting away and having a great time. Join the party and talk to five chatty rumor mongers, who obviously love to chat and spread rumors, kinda like high school, and ask them about the demon. They will each give you a clue as to who they might be, what they wear or their gender. DBM and Big Wigs or Weekara will help you have a list of clues ready so you have an easy way of checking which of the nobles they describe. 
If you accuse the wrong one, you will get thrown out and receive a debuff which won't allow you to speak to one again for a short time. There are quick ways to deal with this as well. If you have a demon hunter in your group, once all 5 clues have been discovered, they can use spectral sight and see where the demon is, mark it and move on with the dungeon. Paladins with a Truth Guard Legion Artifact Shield appearance can do the same by checking when their shield glows. We do recommend having one of your party members clicking a random noble as soon as possible as well. If they guess, then it's a short search. And if they don't guess, then the roleplay on the last boss spawn will be significantly shorter as they will be aware of your infiltration and chat less. So once the mini boss is discovered, they will ask you to join them in a more private location. And if you discover them downstairs, they will always go to the left side upstairs. And if they are already upstairs, they will go right. As soon as you are alone, he will drop his disguise and attack you. His notable abilities are Vampiric Claws, dealing damage to your tank and healing for 300% of damage dealt, so your tank should pop a defensive on this. Shadow Bolt Volley, dealing party-wide damage and summons Hypnosis Bat. The bats need to be CC'd in order to stop the cast. Displacement CC's don't work, so you will need to in-cap, stun or fear them. Otherwise, they will just mind control your friends. Once the mini boss is down, one player, generally the tank is the only one who remembers, <laughs> has to pick up the keys off him, while your fastest players should run ahead to the door and already start unlocking it. And there you will find Elisan talking to her advisor. If you spoke to the wrong noble, the boss will be active soon, so it won't take too long to wait. If you found the spy in the first try, the roleplay will be a bit longer. The boss is pretty tough on healing if the ranged players in the tank don't position well, so try to position yourself ahead of time for this one. His first attack is Blade Surge. He will charge to the furthest player dealing physical damage to anyone nearby and leave a bleed, so sidestep the swirly he spawns where he's going to dash and wait nearby. He will also leave behind a clone image of himself in that spot. You should have one ranged player baiting this all the time while everyone else stacks in melee. Piercing Gale is his next attack and it's also position related. The boss will create arcane lines on the floor from his position to the position of his clones. So if all the clones are in the same spot and the tank keeps the boss on the same spot the entire fight, then you won't have much trouble dodging these lines. The clones also cast this, so the more stacked they are, the better. Enveloping winds spawn tornadoes which stun you, so dodge them. You can clear the room when a couple of them are up with an immunity or anti-magic shell. Slicing Maelstrom is an AoE attack he and his clones do and it's reduced with distance, so stay away from him and definitely stay away from a bunch of stacked clones. He follows this attack with another blade surge, so position quickly if you wish to continue stacking them. And this is it, congratulations, you have cleared Core of Stars and you might have gotten your best trinket or ring, we all know those melee players. <laughs> that are probably all of them all the time in Court of Stars. But you will still have a much easier time doing Court of Stars on no matter what key level if you do follow these steps. Thank you for watching the video and once again thank you patrons for supporting our content. Once again this video series and everything else on our channel is supported by our patrons who are graciously helping us create these awesome awesome guys that for some reason just YouTube doesn't like and uh, it's not that popular. But I know you guys love them a lot and we are super grateful if you do decide to check our Patreon page and consider, you know, getting maybe one of those tiers. You have a couple of goodies, some custom wallpapers, access to bloopers, Patreon talks and more. So thank you once again and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye! Loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.